Hello and welcome to Basic Medical Sciences. If this is your first time here, please make sure you subscribe so that you won't miss any of our latest videos. Today we are going to talk about the Ebola virus and the Marburg virus. These two viruses belong to the family Filoviridae. Right, so these viruses are negative sense single-stranded RNA viruses. And negative sense single-stranded RNA virus, in this series, we are representing them using the moon. Right, this virus has an envelope and their symmetry is helical. These viruses, again, like most of the RNA viruses, they replicate in the cytoplasm of the host cell. And also, they are non-segmented viruses. Under the microscope, they appear like filaments or loops. Philo filaments, right? So, they are looped viruses under the microscope. The target cells for these two viruses include endothelial cells, phagocytes, and hepatocytes. So what I'm going to do now, I am going to describe uh, these two viruses in form of something like a comparison, all right? For example, the disease caused by the Ebola virus is called Ebola virus disease, and the one caused by the Marburg virus is called Marburg hemorrhagic fever. In terms of geographical distribution, the Ebola virus is mainly found in sub-Saharan Africa, whereas the Marburg virus is usually Africa in general. And here I gave examples like Zimbabwe, Uganda, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. When it comes to transmission, the Ebola virus is transmitted through contact with bodily fluids of infected people or sometimes non-human primates like gorillas, monkeys, or fruit bats. And also, direct contact with fomites increases the likelihood of nosocomial spread. If we talk about the Marburg virus, this one is transmitted through contact with bodily fluids of infected individuals or animals again. The Marburg virus may also be transmitted through contact with the reservoir host of this virus, that is, the African fruit bat. In terms of incubation, the incubation period of Ebola virus is usually 2 to 21 days, while it's for the Marburg virus is 5 to 10 days. On fatality rate, the fatality rate for Ebola virus is very high, like approximately 50%. And for Marburg virus, is 25 to 90%. Now let's talk about the vaccine. As of December 2019, there is a vaccine for Ebola virus known as the recombinant vesicular stomatitis virus, Zaire Ebola virus. What? For Marburg virus, we don't have any internationally licensed vaccine. Now let's talk about the symptoms of these two viruses, the Ebola and the Marburg virus. So the symptoms can be classified into two groups. Firstly, initial flu-like symptoms and secondly we might have severe viral hemorrhagic fever with bleeding diathesis okay so let's start by our uh, initial flu-like symptoms these include headache dizziness high fever myalgia arthralgia sore throat lymphadenopathy and gastrointestinal symptoms such as abdominal pain, diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting. So here, uh, this picture is representing uh, severe viral hemorrhagic fever with bleeding diathesis. This is characterized by diffuse hemorrhage, including 
blood diarrhea, hematuria, mucosal bleeding, petechiae, and ecchymosis. In addition to that, the patient might have hypovolemic shock and mouth organ failure. Sepsis and disseminated intravascular coagulation are also complications of this uh, severe viral uh, hemorrhagic fever. And last but not least, there might also be meningoencephalitis. Now let's talk about the diagnosis. Firstly, we will need to ask about the patient's medical history. Specifically, we need to know the detailed travel history to endemic regions. And also, we will need to know the history of exposure to a potential source of infection. Right. So after this, we will need uh, to do general laboratory studies. Right. And these include uh, complete blood count, liver function test, etc. Right. But the best way or the best uh, method for diagnosis of Ebola and the Marburg virus is reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction. This is the best way. On treatment of these two viruses, actually we don't have uh, a specific treatment for Ebola and the Marburg virus. But supportive treatment includes management of fluids and electrolyte balance, maintenance of blood pressure and oxygenation, analgesics for fever and pain, blood products in patients with severe thrombocytopenia, coagulopathy, and hemorrhage. Right, so if we talk about management of pain and fever, we need to know that aspirin and NSAIDs should be avoided in viral hemorrhagic fevers uh, because they are associated with an increased risk of bleeding. On prevention, we need to avoid contact with blood, body fluids, or tissue infected reservoirs or humans. Secondly, we need to avoid traveling to endemic areas. In case of our suspected cases, there is need for immediate notification of the local health authorities. Above that, there is need for strict isolation of infected patients and their contacts with disinfection and sterilization measures. And if you remember, on disinfection, I said uh, these viruses, they have an envelope. So if we use alcohol-based detergents, we can actually uh, kill these viruses. And last but not least, for medical practitioners, they should wear PPE. For example, impermeable gowns, gloves, respiratory protection, and rubber boots. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment on the comment section, and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, until next time, head bowed.